Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nerds video series on C++ multithreading and this is about identifying threads at runtime in C++. So this video is going to be a very small video like 2-3 minutes. So watch this video till the end so that you will know how to get thread identified when you are running your program because it is very important and there are two ways. One is let's say you are inside main function, you created one thread T here. Okay. This thread is somewhere here. This is some function and you created this thread here and this is the thread. Now inside this thread, inside this function, you will have to call std colon colon this thread colon colon and this is the id. I mean function get underscore id and then that's it. So if you are in the thread, then you have to say this thread. Otherwise, if you are in some another thread, let's say a main thread and there you created this thread, then in that case, you already have this T object right with you. So in that case, you'll say T dot get ID. That's it. And then this and this are going to be same ID and you can identify them. So this is the second place. This is the first place. So let me show you some theory part. So we have already discussed two things. See, std thread get id and std this thread get id. This we will use when we are in main thread where we have just created it. So we can directly say t dot get id and this is where we are actually inside the thread. Then we'll say this thread and get id. Now, why do you get thread id? First biggest purpose is to debug your program because sometimes there are like 10 15 threads and which thread is failing you have to know and you just want to debug that particular thread or you want to put some condition when this thread happens i mean execute in that case you do this and this operation or stop or whatever you want to do so in debugging purpose it is highly used and for creation termination synchronization and querying the thread info also this thread id is actually used so this is very important so this was about why to get thread ID and let's see a few more points, which is it depends on OS how they assign IDs to thread, meaning there is no standard way like how a thread ID should be assigned. It can be assigned anyways. Generally, it is a numeric number. I'll show you that with some program. So don't go anywhere. I'll show you that. And the second important point is unique with a process, meaning this thread ID is always unique inside a process because a single process can have many threads. So there cannot be two same thread IDs under a single process, which means there can be similar thread ID across different processes. And another point is always does the managing and can be reused. Meaning let's say you created one thread under your process and then the thread is terminated its job was over now you again created another thread it is possible that os may use the previous thread id because it's no longer in use so it will reuse its previous thread id what it was created before so enough talking let's go to the program and see so this is a very simple program you already know we have vector of threads so we will create threads inside this vector. I have explained all these things like how to do all these things in my previous video. So basically we are creating threads inside vector. So this particular vector is holding threads for you. Okay. And then we are sleeping for some time so that this will get printed and then we'll print created thread ID here. So the whole point is, let me remove this. This is of no use for now because as I told you, Every OS have its own way to represent thread IDs. So I was trying something different, but that's not needed. So yeah, this is the first place where actually I'm creating the thread. So I have that thread object with me worker vector contains that thread object. So I can directly say dot get ID on that object. And when I am inside the thread, then in that case, I'll say this thread and then get ID. Let me quickly run this. We will see the output. See, I created three threads and we can see that this and this both are equal. So first we are printing thread ID 
when we are creating that thread with that thread object itself and then another is when we are actually inside that particular thread so these are two ways you can get the thread ids and this is how you can identify your threads while you are running your program i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching guys bye bye take care i'll see you in the next videos